Welcome to the very first tutorial for a guy and his laser. In this first video, we're going to be covering the basics of creating a um, neon sign for a customer. This is going to be part of our neon sign series. Um, in this first video, I'm going to show you what I do in light burn. Um, this won't be a light burn tutorial. I will show you some of the basics, but I'll upload a full light burn tutorial for my laser uh, in the coming days. This first video is going to cover just um, setting up the file for the laser, whether we're doing just a text neon sign or whether we're doing a logo neon sign and just kind of the steps that I take to build the file and get it ready. Um, the next couple videos are going to cover the installation and wiring of the neon lights, what I use to adhere it to the acrylic, um, how I package it for shipping, uh, and I'll, I'll eventually get into some of the more of the business model on how I acquire customers and uh, how to grow the neon light segment of your business. These things are extremely um, eye appealing. They are um, easy to sell, great for weddings and events, and yeah, uh, let's get started. So um, the first first thing I'm going to show you is just a basic, just a basic neon sign uh, using lights, and we're going to use my last name and just kind of cover exactly how I build um, the neon light for the laser. So in this. Um, in this portion, we're going to take uh, the text tool here in Lightburn. I just select it anywhere on my artboard here. Um, this is Lightburn. This is used with my Thunder Laser. Uh, and I'm just going to select a font that's good for neon lights. And that's kind of a lot of script fonts or very boxy fonts or easy. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to use this Bayside font. And I'm going to type out the kick lighters. And as you can see, um, this is this is set up pretty well for neon lights already. Obviously, all the letters are connecting. Spacing looks good, which we'll talk about because there's a couple different neon light sizes that you can get. Um, I'll put a link in this video as well. I sell neon light supplies and neon lights themselves, so you don't have to wait for them from overseas or get a huge bulk amount. So this sign. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make a 36 inch wide sign. Um, so what we're gonna do, uh, we can we can do one of two things, right? So we're gonna size this about to, let's say 33 inches. That gives us an inch and a half on each side. And as you can see, I have my my ratio locked here. So a 33 inch wide sign gives us these letters at almost seven inches tall which is a pretty good sign. Um, so we can do one of two things, right? We can do a rectangle around this and we can do this at 36 inches like we talked about. And we can move this and place it like, like that around the sign. And what's nice, um, what a lot of people like is it's very boxy. People, people aren't a huge fan of that. So what you can do is you can hit this little corner radius button here and if you select the rectangle and hit the corner radius you can see that there's no points currently on the corners to make um, to make rounded corners so if I right click this rectangle and hit convert to path that now gives us the ability you can see these points on the corners if I click one of the points it's gonna make a rounded edge Let's say I wanted it a little more rounded. I'm going to control Z or undo that and bump this up a little bit. Maybe we'll say one and we'll do this on each corner. This gives us a nice rounded edge sign look. What I normally do after this is I put mounting holes and I'll also link you to the um, acrylic sign standoffs I provide with all of my signs. Uh, they will also be for sale on the website. That is your first option for a backer. Your next option is, is that normally what I do is I shrink the sign down. 
if you want to do more of a cut to letter type of sign, you hit this little offset shapes tool. We want to hit outward instead of inward. We're going to scroll in so we can look at this. We're going to keep it round. Uh, we're going to do the outer shapes only so that way it's not trying to offset any of the um, inner shapes. We're going to kind of build this up. We're going to make this a little smaller and try again. So it does make a difference if you make this smaller and use the offset tool. Uh, hit outward again. You can see that it takes a lot less. It takes a lot less and what you want is to make sure that these two words are connecting obviously. So we're going to get it to that point there. We're going to select it all. We're going to expand it out. And this is pretty good. This is pretty good. The only thing I don't like about it that's a risk in shipping is this area here could easily break off because there's just not much surface area between these two points. So what I normally do is I just select this outer shape. I select this edit nodes tool and you can see these nodes that are right here. What I do is just with the left mouse button, I select them all and hit the D for delete. I just try to make this a little level, which that's pretty good. So that gives us more surface area from point to point so that this sign has a better chance during shipping to make it in one piece. And I'm talking from experience that that is an issue. So what I'll do next is I'll grab our circle tool. I will make just any size circle. And for the standoffs that I use, um, first actually we need to make our sign to the correct size. I apologize, let me back up a little bit. We set a 36 inch sign. So a 36 inch sign makes it 10.2 inches tall now. Next part that I do is I grab this circle and I make it 0.4 inches by 0.4 inches. And I'll grab and I'll put a mount hole here I'll put a mount hole here in this corner, another mount hole over here, let's say right there, and another mount hole here. Obviously they don't, they don't matter too much uh, as far as placement and level and uh, stuff like that just because they're, they should get this in and mark exactly where the holes are going to be on the wall by lining up the sign on the wall. Um, this sign can also be used uh, with hanging chains so that uh, they could just hang them from the top of two holes and with it like this, um, as long as these points are far enough away, the sign shouldn't tilt or anything like that. So if you haven't used light burn before, what I normally do is obviously we need anything that's cut out. Anything that's cut out, we need to select I'm just going to group, right click it and group it together so that way I can change the color of it. So I'm going to change that to blue and then if I select the inside, I'm going to change that to a different color because obviously all I needed to do is etch anything that's yellow so that me and my team know exactly where to lay the neon lighting, which we'll show you in some further videos. So, obviously you use your own settings, but me, I have a 51 inch, uh, 100 watt laser from Thunder Laser. Mine is normally a speed of 15 and a power of 93 on minimum and maximum power. I use air assist. And then on the etching, I usually use 250 speed, 20 power, air assist as well. And that usually gets me exactly what I'll need. Um, so it'll just etch out the kick lighters and it will, that's kind of bothering me. Let me move this up a little. Um, this one too. Uh, so it'll etch out these letters and it will cut out these holes as well as the outer part of the sign. And we have done our part in setting this up. <coughs> I am going to so we have the we have the word version of a neon sign and setting that up. Uh, next, I'll show you is I will show you a logo and what I do for a logo. 
let me grab an image here. I'm going to blur out the screen while I do this so no private information is given away from a client of mine. This is a Okay, so I have uh, grabbed this image. I'm going to take the image into Lightburn. Lightburn has a extremely nice um, tracing tool, which I'm about to show you how to use. So they want this to be a neon sign. So obviously, my first my first um, kind of thing that I look at is is the possibility to make it neon. Uh, should we outline the letters? Should we make the letters to shape? Um, they have this blue to green gradient here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer them a green version or a blue version. Mixing these two probably not worth it and takes a little bit of time. I'm going to right click this image and I'm going to hit uh, trace image. And as you can see anywhere these pink lines are, it's going to give me lines to work with in the software. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to get rid of the original image. I'm going to turn all this to a color where I can see it and it makes sense. So just looking at this, um, I would likely do all of these letters. Uh, I've got to ungroup these. I would likely do all of these letters in a uh, just a single neon. I don't believe I would outline these. So I could start with connect because this is going to be pretty easy. We're going to use our offset shapes. We're going to do inward and we are going to cut this down a little bit. Let me see if I can get this cut down enough to make sense. We're going to do outer shapes only and delete original objects. Let's go back and do that again. We are not going to delete original objects because we need, I keep messing this up. We're not going to delete original objects because we need to manually delete some of these items because it was trying to take away some of my inside shapes. So those, although not the cleanest lines, we can lay neon over it and they'll never even know. They'll never even know that they were jagged or messed up. Um, we are going to go inward with this. Uh, med, we might want to, med, we might want to actually outline the letters and it may look better just based on their logo um, if that makes sense. So we're going to make this a little large, 0.14 maybe, 0.13. Okay, uh, and since we did an outer edge, that is, we're gonna ungroup this because we have a little, little uh, straggler here. Ah, we need to also do it on these two inner pieces. Let's see, point one, two. Okay, so now we have a really solid um, area to trace and, and place our uh, neon lights for those elements. Now we need to do it for the elements up here. We're going to select those. Same thing. We're going to bump this up a little bit, make it big enough for the neon wire. And there we go. We have uh, some elements to place neon lights on. So same thing as below. I'm going to turn this yellow because this just needs to etch. And we do one of two things. We can do the same thing again where we round the corners. which would look good for this logo. That's probably what I'll do with that. Uh, we need to go ahead and make our 0.4 inch cut. 
items that are rectangles, I'll show you something, something a little different that I do since we actually can and it's a lot easier. But you can go ahead and you can take these two, select them, and we can align them in the center. Then it's going to align them to each other. Same thing here, so that the this would be a lot easier to actually level on the wall. We're going to do it horizontally as well, since we just did it vertically. And there we go. We have this available to etch out uh, for our neon sign. Uh, this customer wanted it 44 inches wide, so we hit 44 inches, make sure our ratio locks on, and then this makes this sign 29 inches wide. Or tall, sorry. So there we go. We have two kind of neon signs that we can work with. Um, this is going to conclude uh, video one of the neon sign making I will be back um, I will try to pop these out as quick as possible uh, we're back to work tomorrow I will get some video of my neon guys that are putting the signs together and try to give you some information regarding that don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel it does help me out uh, building this content because beyond neon signs we're gonna have wood cutting we're gonna have wood etching we're gonna have acrylic award building acrylic sign building with other LED lights and embroidery machine work and DTF printing so many different videos so I appreciate you tuning in uh, if you have any questions feel free to reach out in the comments and have a great night